We must learn to handle our materials properly in order to avoid injury and product damage. This is John A. De La Cruz of 3BSBA Operations Management A of Pangasinan State University and this is the 10 principles of proper material handling. So no further ado, let's start with the first principle which is the planning principle which states that we must create a list or a document which can reason out the performance objectives of that specific material. Like for example, what does it do? When will it expire? What room temperature does it need? And what is the cost of that material in order for us to come up with the price and sell it later on? By following all of this, then we can ensure that the product will not go to waste. The second principle is the standardization, which states that we must be consistent with our plan. And we can do this by doing an everyday checklist in order for us to execute our plan properly because remember that a plan is nothing without execution. And if we do all of this, then we can have proper maintenance, promotion, and we can set selected standard that can remain the material's functionality. The third principle is the work principle, which states that we can minimize the work efforts in the workplace but not reduce the productivity. And it is quite simple. We must, we just give the task or a job for each individual person for us to speed up the assembling of a product. And we can do this by assigning someone for marketing in procurement and someone for packaging. The fourth principle is the ergonomics principle, which states that we must prioritize the health condition of the people in our workplace, including ourselves, in order for us to prevent tissue injuries in the neck, shoulders, in the feet, and in order to prevent broken hands. We can do this by following the do's and don'ts in lifting a heavy material, which I will demonstrate at the end of this video. But before that, let's move on with the fifth principle, which is the unit load principle, which states that when delivering items, we must maximize the space of our vehicle and we can do this by correct packing. We can place similar boxes and we must make sure that we know their height and weight. On the other hand, we have the sixth principle which is the space utilization principle which when proper handling in materials, we must have a warehouse but before choosing a warehouse, we must Measure the parameters first and we must measure the inventory stock we need in order for us to not overflow the warehouse. The seventh principle is the system principle which we must create a system which we can recount the items individually in order for us to not lose money. We can also make a system where we can ensure the material quality from our suppliers in order for us to make or assemble a product in order for us to deliver it to the, our customers in their expected date. The eighth principle is the automation principle, which we must use technology or machineries like forklift, cranes, elevators, trucks for us to have enhancement in the movement of materials or transportation of the materials we have by not putting much of an effort in carrying them. The ninth principle is the environmental principle which states that we must minimize the energy consumption in the workplace in order to save the environment from too much pollution caused by our vehicles and machineries. So we must avoid hazardous raw materials and so we can protect the environment from pollution. The tenth principle is the life cycle cost principle which states that we must determine the lifespan or the cost of that materials in order for us to choose whether we prefer cheap or expensive materials or durable from what is not. Like for example, we can choose a wood over from a steel. By doing all of these principles, we can make sure that the materials are in good shape and we can make sure that our factories, warehouses, and businesses can be an ISO certified work. Okay, so 
for now, let's move on to the demonstration of do's and don'ts in lifting heavy materials. For example, I have this package over here and I want to place it outside the warehouse to show it to my customers. The first do that you want to do is move closer with the object. Because if you are far away from the object and you are trying to lift it, then you may fall flat on your face on the ground and have an accident and this can cause broken nose. So don't try to reach it far away. Again, move closer to the object. The second do that you must do is use your both hands or arms in lifting the object. Do not try to lift the object with only one hand because there is a tendency that when you lift the object with only one hand, there, there is a tendency that you might lose grip and injure your toes. So we must use both hands. The third do that you must do is do a half bend in order for your legs or glutes to provide power before lifting. Do not try to lift the object if you are on a straight position because it will cause injuries to your shoulders because of the heaviness of the material. Again, do a half bend and the fourth thing we want to do is lift the object closer to the body. We must lift the object closer to the body in order for us to not injure our shoulder and the fifth do that we must do is place the other foot backward and the other foot forward in order for us to have a steady balance because if we are on a straight position then we might fall on our back so again the first step you want to do is move closer to the product use both hands in lifting do a half bend and lift the object. The last and the final step is to carry the material and walk slowly with caution. Observe your surroundings because you may fall down on some objects. First blood! Blocking the way. <laughs> and so, that is all. That is the do's and don'ts in lifting a heavy material and I hope you learned something in this video.